Let's all review how to make a post request in Postman. So we'll start, we'll start from scratch. Let's all go to a new tab. Let's all go to a new tab. Get the URL from Friday. Go to a new tab, get the URL from Friday. The one that says HTTP mock API.io forward slash questions. We all have that, that endpoint, correct? Okay. Next, let's change the HTTP method from get to post. Change the HTTP method from get to post. Okay. Change the HTTP method from get to post. Next, let's go to the body. Ch click on the body. Do we all see body? Click on body. And let's click on the raw type here, where it says raw. Click on raw. And we'll paste in from Slack the body message we have. That body is the data getting sent to the web API. In Swift, this would be our model. In Swift, this would be our model. In Postman, we add it as the body. In Swift, we still have to say HTTP body equal to data, right? This is the data we're sending up to the Web API. That data here is the data we send up to the Web API. It's the body of the data. We need to let the Web API or the, um, yeah, the, we need to let the Web API know what type of data we're sending up. That data is JSON. We're sending up JSON to our Web API. So we need to now go to our headers section. To the left of the body, we have headers. So click on headers. Currently, we don't have any headers. We need to specify the content type of the data. So we first off, we go to the key section. We type in content. And we select content type. Content type is what type of data am I sending up to my Web API. I click on content type. What is the value of the data? JSON. JSON. So I start typing in application forward slash JSON. Click on that. Go back to my body. And I want to edit the title that I'm sending up. I'll add a suffix with my name. I'll add a suffix with my name. At this point, has everybody, uh, everybody on the same page as us, right? We all, we have our headers, which is content type application JSON. We have a body of data we're sending up to the Web API, and we're making a post request, correct? Everybody, we're making a post request? Great. So at this point, I'll click on the send button. I'll click on the send button. And at this point, I've created a post. I've created a successful post. Why, how do I know? In the response that I got back, I have an ID and I have an avatar. It's a random avatar. I have the description I sent up. It has my name as well. So we've all created a post successfully. At this point, I'll copy the endpoint URL, copy the endpoint URL, copy the endpoint URL, go to a new tab, go to a new tab, paste it in. Do not change get, keep get the same. At this point, we are making a GET request. We're getting back all the questions from the API. When we make a GET request, there's nothing else we need to add here specifically. If we have an API key, we'll add, a, we'll add an API key, but there's no API key. Everybody with me, right? It's open, there's no API key. So I simply click on the Send button, and at this point, I should get back all the questions that was posted. Indeed, I do, right? So all the questions are posted. If I want to find mine, I could simply do Command F, Command F in Postman and search for my name. And I find my particular post here. It's ID 108. This is my post. Was everybody able to do Command F and find the name? Very good. So in one minute, we're able to create a post and we're able to get our post, right? In iOS, it takes longer. But here, Postman, we were able to send data, get back data, right? Confirm that we have our data. And as we saw with Post, Post is a little bit more complicated because in Post, we're sending up data. We have to tell the API what type of data it is. Where do we do that? Where do we tell the API what type of data we're sending up? In Postman, where do we say that? 
in headers, right? In headers here, we say what type of content and what's the value of that content. In Swift, we use add value or set value on the request, right? So to tie in, we have in Swift, we tell it what type of HTTP method. It's a post method in that case. What's the body? The body is the data here. This is the body. And the body is the same format as your model. You could send up a nested body as well. I could have a, a body that has, for example, the Airtable. In Airtable, let me see if I have Airtable here. Right. If you're doing an Airtable post request, this would be what the body looks like. And that body needs to be the same as the Swift body. So your Swift body needs to model the data you're sending up. And when you have that Swift model, you convert it to data, the API is happy, right? So here I could have a body with a dick well, in that case, that's, a, that's an array of records. And I have a fields property, which is a dictionary. And here I have a name and I have a date. So that would be the Airtable post request, right? Nested, but we're familiar with um, how to do a nested model, right? So our model would be, in that case, maybe it's called a record, and I send up a record. This is what the body would look like. But in our example today here, this is what our body looks like. We have a description, a title, and a lab name. Any questions about Postman so far? We're able to do, yes, sir? Not necessarily. In our use case, it's the same, but not necessarily. It could be different based on the API um, architecture, architecture. In our case, it's a very simple one endpoint does both things. I could have a secure post where you have to be an admin or somebody to post. Not everybody posts, it would be a different API. Because in an API like that, it would be very easy for somebody to manipulate the data. Since they know both your endpoints are the same, anybody else could just post to it. But you probably want it to be more secure. Cool. Um, but that particular API we're using is for learning purposes. In a more robust API, the endpoints could be different. Because they do expect different parameters as well. API key, we have no API key here, for example. And the, yeah, cool. Uh, in the back, Tiffany, you had a question? Change your mind. Okay, cool. Um, but uh, back to Cameron here, we, we add in data to the same bucket that we're getting data from. But again, in a more robust API, it necessarily would not be the same, right, for security purposes. Okay, cool. Um, any questions about post? Post, we know the basics, we know we need a body. Yes, sir? I'll say that again. Uh, the headers here, right? Oh. oh, you want me to go over it? Is that the question? Yeah. Oh, um, the part we just did, we, had, we created a post request. Yeah. We had the endpoint URL, which is the same, happens to be the same as the questions API, but not necessarily the same in a more robust API. Uh, same endpoint, we changed the headers, we added a content type. That's the that's the key for the data we're sending up. We let it know what sort of data we're sending up in the value section of it. And that's application forward slash JSON. And that was about it. There's no API key, there's no security there. That's what I was saying. Like in a more robust, like a Facebook, for example, or well, Facebook uses GraphQL. That's a whole different ballgame altogether. But in like a meetup API, for example, there's more parameters, there's more security there. You can just simply post without having some sort of API key or as an air table as well. There's an API key, there's also a project ID. So there's two levels of security there. Does that answer your question? Okay. Any other questions? Cool. All right. So let's all go over to, let's continue talking about our objective. So I really want us to make sure we know the post um, topics and what we need for post. We need JSON encoder. This is the class that we use to encode our objects to data, our Swift objects to data. We need a URL request. A URL by itself is not enough. We need a URL request. That's why we change our network helper. Right? When we first made our network helper, it was using a URL. We were not sending up any data. We are only getting data. 
in our particular post now, we have more stuff sending up. We have data sending up, we have headers, header information sending up. We need to package it in a URL request. What is a URL request? A URL request is a class um, in foundation that allows us to package more metadata along with data, cache policies in an object, right? Okay, as far as like the objective of today, our app now, we could post a question, we could see a question. So in our detailed view of our application, we'll have an answer button. At the top right, we'll have an answer button. That way when the user clicks on it, it presents a model view so they could add some answer to the question. In the detailed view, there'll also be a see answers a C answers button. That C answers will make a get request to get all the answers for that particular question. So in that detail view, we'll do post and we'll do get. Okay, again, this is review because we've seen post on Friday. We'll see post again today and we'll see get again today. So user can see question details. We haven't done that. So we should be able to segue from our lab controller over to our detail controller to show details of the question. We haven't done that. The view is there, but we haven't passed the data yet. Use, what's that? User can click on see answers button to get the answers for a selected question. User can get post, user can post an answer to a question. So very similar, let me pull up the app here. So we could see what it looks like. Um, so this is what the project will look like. So I could see a question, right? I have an answer question button at the top, right? I could answer a question. It presents a model view with one text view. I could post, I could cancel out of this. Here I see one answer. I could click on this and see the answer. And there's an answer here, right? the answer to the question. So that's the objective of our app, to be able to post an answer, see the answers, okay? So there's back and forth. Somebody could post a question, they could see answers to the question. All right. So now we, we can't see our image yet, so we'll see some random image. We could see a question that somebody posted. And here we see there's two answers to it. We could go to it and see what the answers look like. Okay, so that's the objective of it. Any questions about our objective for the day? Yes, Mel. Say that again. Lunch. Um, which one, pizza? <laughs> Apparently there is an answer. Um, yes, so, yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. All right, so let us go build this project. Uh, what do we have so far? Let's go to Xcode. So let's run our app and see the state of it now. What does it have? Not here. I want you to be here. Uh, looks like we have some bad data, so I need to fix that. One second. Did everybody get an app error? Okay, yeah, so there's a string but found a number. Let's see what that is. A uh, string but found a number. Created at. Uh, did we put a created at? Let's see, I got it, don't worry.
Oh, that looks like a culprit, maybe. If we post in, make sure we post in um, the API again is not that secure, it's not able to catch bad post. Okay, that should be, let's test this. Okay, uh, for now, comment out created at until I fix the API, okay? There's a bad piece of data on the created at um, property. So for now, go to your question, go to your question, comment out created at, go to your question model, comment out created at, comment out created at. If you build, you'll get maybe two errors. At this point, go to your lab question controller. Go to your lab question controller. Go to the two errors. One of them will be right at line um, 62, where it says self questions equal to question, and comment out the sorted part of it. So we're not sorting right now. I, again, I'll fix the API during break. So comment that out, and what else do we comment out? Uh, go to your self all and comment out the detailed text label. Again, Postman, you could send anything up, right? And the API is not as secure. In a more secure API, it will give you an error telling you bad data sent up. Okay? At this point, you should be able to run your app and get data. So if you run your application, everybody gets data, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, the number one, go to question model, comment out, create it at. If you build, you'll get two errors. The first one in the cell for row, comment out the detailed text label. Yes, in the back.
go ahead, everybody in this will write a project. Um, somebody sent out post, uh, post a question in Slack. Somebody deleted the post a question by accident. Okay. Welcome to web developer world where data gets corrupted and you have to fix it. Uh, okay, so let's keep going. For now, we want to be able to segue and see data here. So we want to be able to segue and see data. So pass data from view controller A to view controller B, right? So what we want to do in the create question controller, not create question, sorry, in the question detail controller, we want to set up our image view. We have the image view already. We want to set up the image view. There's an image view here, the lab name, and the question description. Those are the things we want to set up. We want to update that UI. So let's go ahead and do that. So in our, I guess the quickest way is to go to our storyboard. So let's go to our storyboard. Go to your main storyboard. Maja, did you get it? OK. Let's go to our storyboard. And we want to connect our image view, our lab name label, and our description text view over to our controller. So go to storyboard, click on the assistant editor. And make sure that your question detail controller comes up. Question detail controller. While I make this bigger. OK, cool. So we have our image view we want to add to our controller. Let me get more space. OK, cool. Go ahead and control drag from your image view over to your question detail controller. We'll simply call it user image view. Again, this is a random URL from the web. Connect. So we have an image view. Next, we have the lab name. So control drag from the lab name. It's a label, and we'll simply call it lab name, lab name label. And lastly, we have a text view. Control drag over to your detail view and call it quest, question text view. And connect. OK. Next, we need some sort of variable. Because again, anytime you pass in uh, information from view controller A to view controller B, there's some sort of object you want to set on that second view controller. In our case, we need a question. In our case, we need a question. I'll set up my view did load, call super view did load. In super view did load, I'll have an update UI. I'll make this private. I'm making it private because that's the only place I want to use it in my view controller here. So it will be called update UI. What does update UI do? What should it do here? Right, so update those three elements, correct? Mm -hmm. All right, awesome. So first off, we'll get our question, which is an optional right now. So I'll use shadow in here, same name. If we don't have a question, we want to crash the app. This is a good place to crash the app because I need a question in order to set up my detail view controller. If I do not have a question, I cannot set up my UI. Something went wrong in your prepare for segue. So could dot whoa, uh, no shouting. Could not update UI, verify a question got set in prepare for segue. 
Yes. Oh, why are we making the uh, update UI private? Because um, as we delve deeper into programming, we want to re we want to be able to encapsulate our objects. If it's not public, mark it private. If nobody outside of this view controller needs access to it, mark it private. Get in the habit of doing that. Exactly. It's like by default, you start with a let unless you want to change that variable. All right? Private unless it needs, exactly, exactly. Cool? Very good. Uh, cool. So we have our question. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Let us start setting things up. My lab name. I'll go for my lab name. Yes. Yeah, once you have an instance of a question detail controller, you could call update UI and do anything you want. Because it's open, it's public. You have an instance to the class, you could access its public methods. Right? Same way when, you have, when we have a string and we make an instance of a string, you have replace for string you have access to because it's public. Anything that's not public, you don't have access to it even through an instance. Typical example, network helper. I cannot create a new network helper. I don't have access to that initializer. So I can say let network helper equal to network helper open parents, close parents. I have no access to it. It's private. Exactly. So very good. Uh, lab name is, where am I getting lab name from? Question has a lab name. At this point, again, this is review. Really be comfortable with passing data. Big part of unit three. Having two view controllers is not enough. You need to be able to pass data from this lab question controller over to the detail question controller. At this point, we should have 80% proficiency there with that. So we have, uh, we, set, we set up our lab name label. Next up, let's get to our text view. Question text view. Question text view has text, and that will get question dot description. How do I set the image? How do I set the image? How do I set the image? Yes. Yes. Yes, something very similar to that. But we have access to a utility function. We have access to a utility function. We have access to an extension in our project that we could use. Exactly. So get image on what? user image view, right? So on user image view, we have an extension on image view. The extension on image view is called get image. So on my user image, I am able to say get image and pass in the URL as Tiffany said. The URL is question.avatar. Again, at this point, we should be able to set images using this extension. If I go back to, ex to the extension, I'll go back to the extension. The extension is UI image view plus extensions. And this is where we're getting this function from. It's an extension on UI image view. It's an instance method. It works on the instance of an image view. On that instance, I could say get image, pass it a URL string, and it has a completion handler. Either it has an image or it has an app error. Cool, great. Uh, so let's go set that up. In my question detail view, we are here. So at this point, I will use a switch on my result. In case we have a failure. In case we have a failure, 
or we have success. In the success case, we have the actual image back from the API, from um, our set image. So if I do have an app error, I could do many things. I could set an image that says there's an error, something happened to the user, which we'll, which we'll act actually do. So let's just do, we don't need the app error per se, because we're not actually printing it out, but we will set up an image. And to set up the image, we need to go to the dispatch queue. Why dispatch queue? We're coming back from an asynchronous call. Here, we need dispatch because because get image is using network helper which uses URL session and is on um, a background thread. We are not allowed to update UI on a background thread. The app will crash as a result. Any questions about dispatch main async? Any questions about why we're going from background thread to a main thread to update the UI? Any questions about why URL session is on a background thread? Yes? Uh, just to change the um, image. In case of failure, I would just put like a warning, or I could give a, a, I could do many things. I could put an alert controller. Um, either way, I have to let the user know something went wrong. Yes, a warning, an alert, anything we could tell, tell the user. In that case, we'll just tell the user something using the alert controller. So we'll actually just say self dot show alert, show alert, and we'll say. Um, so we could just put a warning. What's about that? We'll do that. <laughs> which we did last week and the week before. I want to show us different things we can do. Oh, okay. Right? I want to... <laughs> no, that's okay. I was just saying, why would you get a warning for that? That's fine. I also want to show different things we can do. But yes, we could definitely do an image like we've done before. So here, we'll simply do an image. Um, keep a, man, a many happy here. <laughs> so self.userimageview.image. And we'll use a system image, UI image. System um, exclamation spend this wrong uh, mark. Is that it? Verify? No, totally wrong. Is it am I good here? Exclamation mark? There's no dash? Person that fail? That makes more sense, actually. Thank you, Cassandra. No, no, wait, wait, wait. It's the holiday week, guys. Come on. Um, okay, person that fail. We go with person that fail. Yes. Over the whole thing. Not necessarily. We only want to do it where we do UI. It's going to be a different image. Uh, yes, like right here. It's going to be different. Here we actually have the image. Okay, so here we actually have the image. 
that the person wants to see. Self dot user image view dot image equal to image. Okay, so if there's an error, we have some placeholder image. If there's no error, we actually show that random user image that we got from the internet. Okay. Let's actually go ahead and run the app. Is that it? Are we done? I have the label. Oh, right. I have to do the weak self, right? Also, we did not create a segue. Very good. So here, uh, Jahid said we need to do a weak self. Why are we doing weak self here, Jahid? Uh, we're coming from a background thread. We're in a closure that captures self. We're in a closure that captures self. It captures the class itself. It creates a strong reference to it. So in order to break that strong reference, we break it using weak self. Any questions about capture list and why we use them? Greg, any questions about capture list? Yes. That's it. You get it. OK. Uh, cool. So let's make sure we call update UI in our view did load. Update UI. And I'll call it update UI. Where am I? Update UI. Updated UI. Ah. Monday spelling. So in view load, we call update UI. Update UI basically it takes a question, it unwraps the question, uh, uses the question to update my name label, my lab name label, also the question view gets updated, and we get an image back. Those are the things we do. And as somebody pointed out, we're not done, because the prepare for segue, we haven't set that up yet. So at this point, if you run your application, it's going to crash, right? And it should crash if I try to segue here. It will crash right at our fatal error. It will crash saying, could not update UI. Verify question got set in prepare for segue. Okay? So at this point, if your app does crash, you know where you need to go. I need to set up my prepare for segue. Where do I set it up? In my question control, in my lab question controller. So I go back to my lab question controller. I go right below view did load here. In my lab question controller, right below view did load, I'll set up my prepare for segue. Prepare for segue, what are we after? We after question detail controller. How do we get access to question detail controller, Yulia? Segway.destination, very good. Am I done? What? So I'm downcasting it to the type I expect, which is question detail controller, very good. Am I done? It's like we're never done, right? Uh, what else we need? I have the view control I'm going to. Index path because I need to know what question got selected. So here I say let um, index path equal to, I have my table view. My table view has a property on it called index path selected, index path for selected. Don't shout at me. Um, <laughs> index path for, I'm just kidding. Index path for selected row. Um, great. So at this point, we have enough information we needed. If we don't have all that information, something went wrong. So could not segue missing index path uh, question detail controller. Great, so we have our question detail controller, we have our index path. Now we need to find the question, the actual question that was selected. Oscar, how do I get that question? Okay, so I say let question. So you have to set that equal to the original variable. You have to 
the array or whatever I have, the dictionary, right? In that case, we have questions, right? And then? Um, index path that row. Excellent, very good. And now I have my question. What am I doing now? Uh, Lilia, what's the next step? How do I pass that question over to my question detail controller on lines 38? We have access to the question detail controller and we have the question. We're about to go to the second view controller. It has a question object on it that's public and we have that second view controller instance. So now we just need to set the question on that view controller. So what we need to say is my question, my question instance dot question equal to question. Christian, can you explain what that line does? Right. Lilia, you got that? So what Christian is saying, we have a hold on the view controller we're going to and we also have the question that was selected. Now I need to set that question on the view controller I'm going to. Because if I get to that view controller, I want to have that question. If I don't have that question, our app will crash, right? Because we need to set that question in order to update our UI. That question has the avatar, it has the um, question description, it also has the lab name. All right, everybody? Cool? Great, so at this point, we should have enough information to run the app and get our question UI updated. So if I click on my question, I have an avatar. Again, those are random, random images. I have my lab name, and I have my question description. Do we all see those three elements updated? Right? We'll go one step further with our UI. We'll make the um, image view circular. So we'll make a circle image, and the best place to set that up Go back to your question detail controller. By the way, did everybody get the three elements updated? Did everybody get the three um, elements updated, the UI? Go back. Did your image view, did you connect it to your scene? What does it say about your image view? Did you rename your image view and you did not refactor? Yeah, you deleted something, madam, without renaming, without refactoring. Um, Julia, what is yours?
melee arrow somewhere there. Okay. Where were we now? We tried to make our image view circular, correct? We will go to our question detail controller right below view did load. I will implement view will layout subviews. I'll call super view will layout subviews. View will layout subviews, as we saw on Friday, or what day that was, this, this um, view lifecycle method gets called when the, when the subviews are added, right? So the subviews are added, I could come in here, I could get the frame, I could get the size of the actual image view, and do something else with it, right? As we get more into unit four, our view code, more of our view code will be in our view itself, not in the view controller. But if you want to get access to some sort of view component and do some sort of frame changing or make something rounded or whatever it is, view will layout subviews, that's what you want to do. Uh, I'm inside of the, I'm in the wrong place, sorry. Thank you, Cassandra. Cassandra is correcting my ways here. I did click on it, but it did not go there. So we're going to question detail controller, guys. Question detail controller. Below view did load in question detail controller. I'm in question detail controller. And I want to make my question, I want to make my user image view a circle. How do I do that? Okay, corner radius. So I say you, you, uh, user image view dot corner radius. Layer, right? Equal to? Um, if you would just want to make like a rounded rect, I could just give some number, like four. But I want to make it exactly a circle. So I need to get access to the width of it. So to get access to the width of the image view, I say user image view dot frame. The frame is the frame of that view. What is your frame? On the frame, it has a size property. The size property is a tuple of width and height, right? So on the frame, I say that size, get me your size. On the size, I say get me your width. And on the width, I say what? Half, right? How can I do half? Divide by two, right? So that's what we need to type in here. So I get the user image view, I get its frame, I get its size, its size is a tuple of width and height. I could get any of those, by the way, because it's a square. And then on that square, I say divide by two. So size, width, divide by two. And at this point, we should run our app and get a circular image. Right? Great. All user friendly, all family friendly photos. Thank you, Web. Were we all able to get a circular image view? Yes? OK. Great. Perfecto. So we did step, let's go back to what we did here. We'll take a break, by the way, before we go back and talk more about stuff. OK, so to recap, we just took care of our first objective. We took care of user can see question details. OK, we'll take a short break, and we'll come back, and we'll do either one of those two. Um, maybe we do post first. So we'll do post. User can post an answer to a question. OK, so we'll take a short break. We'll come back. Any questions about objectives or what we just did? I didn't say go yet, madame. You are preparing, okay. Pre give me the questions. Any questions about what we did this morning? At this point, everything we've done so far again is review, but please bring questions. I'm not getting enough questions. This is questions review week. We don't have a question review day. We've been reviewing since last Monday. So, go. Maybe we make our lab questions the place you ask questions anonymously, because for some reason, maybe you don't want to ask me questions. I don't know. I feel I, I'm sad when you don't ask questions. 
All right, so we'll go to a break. We'll come back in eight minutes. Come back at 11.30 and we'll continue on.